Happy New Year. I thought I'd add another video that explores Bayes' theorem. This also from Miller Chapter 6, assigned to FRM candidates. And this adds another uh, complexity because we go from two-state variable to a three-state variable. As Miller says, the Bayes' theorem can accommodate any number of steps. So it feels more difficult, but the same it's the same Bayes' theorem pattern. And I think the key to really mastering the Bayes' theorem is to do practice questions, especially. So if we take a look at Miller chapter six, here's the problem statement, bear with me. We believe there are three types of managers, underperformers, inline performers, and outperformers. The underperformers beat the market only 25% of the time, the inline performers beat the market 50% of the time, and the outperformers beat the market 75% of the time. So that's about their performance. Then we have, initially we believe a given manager is most likely to be an inline performer and is less likely to be an under or out performer. Specifically, our prior belief, that's a key Bayesian term there, is that a manager has a 60% probability of being inline performer, a 20% chance of being an underperformer, and a 20% chance of being an outperformer. And we can summarize it with this notation, although I drew a chart here just to capture this because we have the prior belief about whether the manager is an outperformer, inline performer, or underperformer. And what we're told is that we have a prior belief that any given manager has a 60% probability. That's the histogram, the uh, bar chart here, a 60% probability that that manager is an inline performer. And a 20% probability that the manager is an outperformer or an underperformer. And if the manager is an outperformer, then they have, now going to the line, they have a 75% probability of beating the market. If the manager is an inline performer, it's a 50% probability of beating the market. And if they're an underperformer, a 20% probability of beating the market. And so that that's given really more efficiently by this notation here that the probability of an underperformer, which is to say the pro their probability of beating the market is 25%, is 20%. The probability of an inline performer is 60%. That's somebody who beats the market 50% of the time. And the probability of an outperformer, which is to say somebody who beats the market 75% of the time, is 20%. So that's the set of assumptions. And then we get the question, the, base, the application of Bayes' theorem. Suppose that we observe, so this is the evidence, the manager, that a manager beats the market two years in a row. What should be our updated belief be? Specifically, uh, what that's is asking is, what is, the, what is our updated belief, given that we've seen two years of market beating performance, that the manager is an outperformer, inline performer, or underperformer. The prior beliefs were 20, 60, and 20, but how do they change given that we observe as evidence two years of outperformance? So before I go to that, the answer also, as I've done before, wanted to capture the assumption set in the probability matrix. The probability matrix, again, is by definition something that has to sum to 100% in these cells, which are joint probabilities. And so I've highlighted in yellow what are the input assumptions given to us, because we have managers here, and you can see where outperformers are 20%, inline are 60, and underperformers are 20%. So these are the unconditional, aka marginal probabilities outside the square. And then we're also told that if it's an outperformer, they will beat the market 75% of the time. So the row here of beating this 15 is essentially given to us because we're told that it's 75% of these 20% beat the market. So 15 is 75% of 20%, meaning that the other, uh, the other 5% must go here. Then for inline managers, who were unconditionally 60% of the population were told that 50% beat and 50% do not. Hence, this is split. These, these are split into 30-30. And the underperformers were told that 25% of the 20% beat the market. So this cell is a 5%. So that is the uh, joint probability matrix and also is a good way to 
an alternative way to solve the bays. Although, as I've uh, said many times, or a few times, for me, the tree is more intuitive than the probability matrix. And so here is the tree that captures the same assumptions we're given. Uh, again, which type of manager, the unconditional probabilities, and then these are the conditional probabilities. So if it's an outperforming manager, con con um, conditional on the manager being an outperformer, their probability beating the market conditionally is 75%. So then we can answer uh, finally the question, and which is a Bayes theorem uh, question. And there are, we have three answers that I've colored them here. But let me just take the first one. And the, the answer, uh, the, the question it really is, what is the probability that we observe an outperforming manager? And I'm just gonna uh, symbolize that with man, MO for manager outperformance. What's the probability that the manager is an outperformer conditional on two years of beating the market? And so the two years of beating the market is the evidence. We don't know what the if the manager we we don't know that if the manager is an outperformer. We just had the prior belief that there was a 20% probability that it was an outperformer. But now that we've observed two years of outperformance, what do we think? And so this is the conditional probability that is the essential application of the Bayes theorem. And we solve this conditional by, by recalling that the conditional probability is equal to a joint probability divided by an unconditional probability. And the joint probability here is the joint probability that these both occur. The joint probability of the manager outperforming and beating the market two, uh, two years in a row which is to say ending up here in this quadrant. So we have the probability of beating the market two, two years in a row, conditional on being an outperforming manager, multiplied by the, the unconditional probability of being an outperforming manager. That is the joint probability divided by the unconditional probability of beating the market. And as usual here, the numerators tend to be easier. The probability, the, the conditional probability of beating the market twice in a row, conditional on or in the event of being an outperforming manager, is just this 75%. That's the probability of being the market in one year. But if we do it two years in a row consecutively, this is already a conditional probability. So that's just 75% squared. Okay, 0 0.75 squared multiplied by the unconditional probability or the prior probability that the manager was an outperformer. We already know that was 20%. I'll just do 0 0.20 there. So the numerator, as usual, is straight, pretty straightforward. And then the denominator is the unconditional probability of beating the market two years in a row. And so that it that that um really is uh the I'll solve that up here the un pro, unconditional probability of two years in a row that's this seventy five percent squared weighted or multiplied by the twenty percent plus this fifty percent squared weighted by the 60% plus this 25% squared two years in a row weighted or multiplied by this 20%. And I already solved this here. That is 27.5%. And that is because it's an unconditional, so it's really weighted across all managers or the population, beating the market twice in a row. So squaring here, squaring here, squaring here, multiplied or weighted by the probability of each manager. So we have that unconditional probability. And so that is our denominator, 27.5%. 
And visually, if we go back to the, what we really want to know is, is the probability that we ended up here two years in a row. This is market beating performance, but so is this and this. But given that we've observed market beating performance, we really want to know what's the probability that it came from a manager here. So visually, I think of that as what's the probability we ended up in this node? It's as a fraction of all three of the market beating nodes, hence the denominator. And so this answer, this works out to, uh, as shaded here in orange, 40 0.91%. So I'll draw, I'll just draw that up here, 40.91%. And then if we did the same thing, um, the same conditional probability, conditional that it was an inline performer given two years of outperformance, then that can, uh, for the inline performer, it would be 54.55%. That's here. And then finally, uh, an underperformer would be only 4.55%. And so um, this is the impact of the Bayes theorem, or this is the illustration. Before we see any, perf any performance, we had these prior probabilities, 20, 60, 60. So a 60%, most of the probability that it's an inline performer. But then we have the evidence. We observe two years of consecutive outperformance of beating the market. And so that increases our posterior probability that this is an outperforming manager. And specifically, it shifts from a 20% prior probability to up to, it more than doubles, to a 40.91% probability. On the other hand, if we did observe two years of outperformance, our posterior probability that this is an underperforming manager shifts down from a 20% prior probability down to only a 4.55%. But these three distill sum to 100%. So that's the application of Bayes' theorem in the uh, in a multi-state example. Again, this is uh, Miller chapter six. I will link to the uh, book in the uh, under the uh, video description. Thank you.